Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, I have to remind myself, I, I fell into this weird habit at, when I worked at Job Corps of saying good morning to people when it was the first time I saw them. Um, huh. Because, you know, Job Corps works on 24-hour shifts. And so, uh. you know, sometimes you'd be seeing people in their first five minutes of work at 4.45 in the afternoon. Um, right, right. Just like... So it is good morning to them. It was good morning for them. Oh, no, I mean, you know. But yeah, it was just weird. I, I don't know how I fell into the habit of doing it, I, but so I did. I find it very much to be the case. I, yeah, I hear my husband doing it sometimes. It'll be three o'clock in the afternoon and he's out in the driveway saying good morning to someone. <laughs> the first greeting of the day. Right. Well, maybe that's maybe that's all that matters. It's the first hello, right? Maybe. I think for me, it's because the day goes by way too fast. <laughs> yeah, it always feels like morning because it's like, oh my god, where is it? Easy to lose track, that's for sure. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, how it is three o'clock in the afternoon right now? I have absolutely no idea. Indeed. <laughs> Which is both fabulous exactly. and horrifying at the same time. <laughs> Yep. Yep. So Sultana is ill today. Oh, thank you, Kini, for letting us know. Sorry about that. Seems to be the way of the world again. Or still, I suppose. Yeah, both. Mm -hmm. We'll wait one more minute and then we'll get underway. How's that? Sounds good. I did not hear from anyone else, so. Oh, there's Damien. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you everyone for being here and um, arriving promptly. Uh, so we have some updates today. We're gonna start with some updates and just make sure we're all sort of, uh, you know, arriving at the same starting point around a number of topics that are important to this project. And, uh, and we also know that within that, there's some more, uh, you know, some more creative solution building that we wanna do around making sure that we're doing robust outreach and ways to get the survey out, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll be spending some time on that. We also know that as we look at the arc of this work, we're moving quickly into a space where having some formulating some strategies and beginning to you know, be able to refine our thinking through the survey results and other forms of outreach to youth is gonna be quite important. So we're gonna spend some time today envisioning measurable strategies that might sort of propel this project um, around the two social determinants of health. More on that as we go. And then we know, and thank you uh, for your feedback via uh, both in the, in the previous session in April and via email uh, around the purpose statement that we are formulating. And, um, and so we're gonna be tinkering with that a bit and sort of getting your additional ideas and refinements and then ideally outside of the session, move that to final and be able to bring it and sort of have it as our, as our uh, sort of North Star, if you will, going forward. We'll then spend a little bit of time talking about next steps and we will have a hard stop at five or before, depending on the pace of our conversation. So uh, that's kind of the lineup for today, I think. And uh, any questions about what we're doing and why? Hearing none, 
Uh, Meg, you want to get us started with some updates and then we'll open the floor afterward to see if anybody else has updates that are pertinent to this project. But Meg, you want to get us going on that? Sure, I'm happy to. So um, first of all, just a reminder, the meeting that is really just for internal purposes so we can um, do some accurate minutes and, and share it with folks who are not here. Um, then uh, I need to let you know that so Bronson, who um, was the staff person designated for this project, has found a different um, job. And so he is no longer working for ACAP um, on this grant. Um, he was able to get a position closer to his parents in West Virginia. Um, and so he's doing that. He has agreed to stay on um, kind of as a consultant capacity. So he will um, be willing to continue editing and, and adding pieces as needed to the plan, kind of evening and weekend type things. So um, he will continue providing that level of support but in terms of day-to-day -day operations, um, he's not doing that anymore. We do have another staff person at ACAP who has some availability to provide some staff support. So you may on occasion get an email from Kerrigan Haney. Um, she is a community educator with ACAP. Her primary responsibility is with some COVID quarantine social supports, but as that activity ebbs and flows, sometimes she has availability to support prevention efforts. So you see that name once in a while, that's where she's coming from. Um, before Bronson left, he did complete the survey um, and with some feedback from you all that was, that was shared. Um, and so we have that um, in place and available for sharing. We've had six responses so far. So that's one of the things that we'll kind of um, discuss, I think. And then I had um, scheduled a couple of different opportunities to try to increase community outreach. And we were going to host some community tables to try to invite people around a meal, to get some perspective and feedback. Um, and as you know, COVID cases are skyrocketing again. Um, local schools are going back into red mode shutting things down. So decided it was probably not the best time to try and invite 20 people to sit around a table and share a meal together inside. Um, so I've canceled both of those um, events and we'll, we'll keep you know, trying to circulate as much as possible in other ways. Um, so kind of open to that. Any feedback that you might have there. And then the last bullet point there is for the RFP. Um, and just to let you know, there was uh, another request for proposals that is essentially identical to the one that we responded to for this particular grant. It's also called Closing the Gap, also through the CDC. Um, it's another one-year planning grant. We are not eligible to apply for that because we received this one-year planning grant. That presumably does not preclude other organizations that might be interested in pursuing this work or continuing this work. So, um, you know, if a different organization wanted to submit an application, um, essentially you have access to the proposal that we wrote in order to get this one, if someone wanted to like, as far as I can tell, you could use this leadership team essentially to continue that work if that made sense to anyone. ACAP is willing to write a letter of support if some other entity wanted to do that, but we just wanted to put that out there that um, Kenny brought the RFP to our attention. We're not able to apply for a second round. That doesn't mean that someone else couldn't. Um, so I th th yeah. those are the short updates that I have, Carol. And yeah, yeah, thanks. Questions about anything that you've just heard? Okay. Um, 
Let's talk a little bit about the survey outreach and how to, you know, how to creatively get the survey out there so we can um, acquire more responses, I think. Uh, and and uh, because six is great, um, any responses are great, but we also know we want as, as keen of an understanding as possible. And I'm wondering if people have ideas for how else to, you know, seeking additional responses, how to go about that. Have you put out to um, like to the high schools and stuff like that? Like how they, I don't know how it goes out through to them. Is that something that is doable? So we have the, the contacts that we have. Um, we've sent it the, and it's hard to tell how, what gets received, right? So we can send it out and then um, people may or may not get back to even let us know that it got through their firewalls. <laughs> um, we did take it to, um, so there was a Boys and Girls Club. They had a glow dance this last Friday and I took it to that event. Uh, we are offering a $100 Amazon gift card as an incentive. Um, we got like four responses to that. It just was the other thing we're running into is because the survey, the, the Google form, we couldn't figure out how to make a response optional. So it's requiring an email which to be honest, also to get entered in the drawing, we have to have a way to contact them anyway. Um, so that was an issue, like for one person, I just put in my own email and then I wrote down their name. And I said, okay, I can put their name into the hat and then I know how to reach them through Boys and Girls Club. So um, trying to be flexible in that way, but. So it is so it the creepy person. Sorry. So it was sent electronically to how many high schools? Um, I think four. Four. And so it would have been sent to a contact person at the high school who would share it with the students? Yeah, it was either a teacher or a guidance counselor. Oh. Hmm. What's it out on on socials? Um, at the moment, I don't know that we have. I, I'd have to look at a caps. I'm just wondering, like, if it is out on, you know, if if I don't know if a cap has like a TikTok and a Snapchat and an Instagram and all of that good sort of thing, um, right. but if it could be put out through all of those. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking like, if you could, if you had a cadre of 10 or 12 kids that you can, you know, pay 25 bucks to do it, um, you know, would they be willing to share it out through their own socials to say, you know, like, hey, can you please do this? We're looking for stuff. We're looking for responses. Um, if you've got youth that you're already working with. So that's very much the case for the G2O program that we'll be hosting in July. Um, it's just that that's later than, you know what I mean? <laughs> Won't have, um, we have, I'm thrilled to say we have at least four applicants already for that program, which is way more than Mayan has for other programs throughout the state. So that's very exciting. Um, it's just that, like I say, that won't be right away. Right. What about the public libraries? It's a really good thought, actually. We could put up a flyer with the QR code. There's a lot of, of course, as we know, uh, youth uh, organizations and activities at the public libraries. It may be something that can be tacked on potentially with some of those events. Also, even just any pre-existing event somehow if it's already an organization of people or people organizing or coming together at something, um, if we just kind of show up to that or something, I mean, even this weekend, there's the Fiddlehead 
uh, festival in Presque Isle. And there's all kinds of various events. I don't know if somewhere in there. Um, are any of these things being printed out or is this just all, this is all uh, virtual? So I, don't, I haven't done any printed. Um, what, what I did like for the Boys and Girls Club, I took an iPad that had it loaded so they yeah. could type it on that. Um, but we, I mean, we could. Is what about mailing? It? Is that is that too old school or something? <laughs> I don't know. To <laughs> mail mail to I, I don't know if there's even like any sort of mailing list or I'm not really sure. Um, just brainstorming. Yeah, I'm not sure who we would mail it to. I mean, I think, um, Damien, your point about the library is really good, and there may yeah. be even the librarians, if the librarians know, and in some larger libraries, there's a youth librarian, right? Yep. Like, sure. tapping that network could be really good, and and maybe even asking, talking to a librarian and saying, would paper copies help? Because I, I, don't, I don't actually know if they would help but I know it might be important to ask, right? Like, it's just a little bit harder in terms of tallying everything afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, it's just more work. Um, yeah. I do feel like we have, that would be easier to find staff support for at ACAP. Like we could say, here's the, here's the paper, put it into the, online survey because that's not a highly skilled thing right you could just and that could be done after hours or whenever but well, I mean another thing I could potentially try is I'm currently teaching a research course at the University of Minnesota for Ken online and I could ask one uh, I could post something and see if one of the students that lives nearby um, could take in a paper copy to the high school or I'm trying to see the class list and where they live. I don't know. I'd have to check into it, but might have a nursing student that might be able to I mean I don't I don't know if they would allow class time like you know five five minutes or whatever. I'm not sure how flexible they are with someone coming in to hand deliver a survey for our students to fill out. I'm not sure. What about churches, church youth groups? That might be hard too with COVID because a lot of people are probably not attending. I do know one of the one of the other concerns that was expressed was um, so like we have a staff member who is a scout leader um, and, and his perspective was well I could have my scouts take it but it's going to skew results because they're all connected and they're all you know like yeah, who are you trying to reach right well on the other hand Yes, I agree with that. And I mean, I don't assume by profile that everyone is what we think they are. So in other words, you might think by virtue of my context that I feel connected and I might feel like the most isolated person in the world, right? I don't, yeah. so it's a, it's a tricky, we probably don't wanna presume I guess. Um, Meg, is it if you well, Rachel, if you talk to your research student or give that some thought and try to figure that out, and then um, not to get all like tactical about it, but whose work is it to do like to address some of the brainstorming ideas that we're coming up with right now? Like, let's just use the librarian for instance, like. 
whose work is it? What is the assumption? Because I don't want to leave this part of the meeting um, just assuming that it's going to get done. Um, and if it's supposed to belong to everybody, then we should talk about that. And um, and if not, if it's a in ACAP's wheelhouse, meaning part of your role, great. But I just don't want to assume we're creating ideas, but then not able to do them as a group. So my assumption is that this is ACAP's responsibility. Okay. That said, I can, like we can essentially do um, a flyer basically with the QR code um, and the social media posts that if you all can help circulate those, I think that would be helpful. And then if you identify places that where we could mail a hard copy, then communicate that to me so that we can get that out. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Cool, thank you. I'll open the floor. Are there other um, announcements or things, just updates, things that you're like, oh, this is pertinent to this project and these two social determinants of health. Anything else going on or noteworthy that we should all know about at this point? All right, just wanna make room because you never know. So then let's turn our attention um, to drafting measurable uh, strategies to address the two social determinants of health. And um, we know one of them is about nutrition security and one is about social connectedness, right? And um, Keeney, this may be a place where I invite you in to say a little bit about, and uh, Meg, you too, to say a little bit about um, why this, why now, and what an example of a measurable strategy for this project might look like. And I'll just invite you to, one or both of you to sort of just get us grounded in that so we can do the work together. I'm gonna to toss it to you, Kenny, go right ahead. Yeah, no, I was just unmuting, un happy to do that. So um, we do know, um, just as a reminder, that social connectedness is one of the priorities of a social determinant, which is where people live, work and play. Um, as an example, um, in the United States, being identified as an issue um, impacting mental health of our youth, um, there's a lot of um, current data out on our um, youth mental health failing, um, impacted by sleep and engagement in community, et cetera. Um, it's certainly related to mattering. It's related to um, engagement at school um, and readiness to, uh, you know, arriving at school and readiness for learning. Um, and then, um, a, a connection to risk behaviors as well. So again, um, it might be early onset of substance use as an example, or um, just um, feelings of depression or anxiety when you're more isolated through social, through connect, um, social connect, you know, lacking social connection. So um, with graded, a greater um, isolation, there's a decrease in, um, and depression and an increase can be with anxiety as well. Is that helpful? Um, I can tie in more mattering information to you as well. Um, we know the connection between being um, the pandemic, which you know I think is reasonable to, to consider um, the pandemic and its impact on um, social connectedness as well. And then the need to kind of reopen um, 
and be um, that for folks that have been socially isolated for a long period of time and lack of connection to how do we safely open up our communities for folks to uh, meaningfully reconnect. So not only with their peers, but the community at large, um, which impacts access to services like food, pantries, et cetera. Um, or just maybe gathering. So you, um, Damien, you mentioned the Fiddlehead um, event this weekend. I'm not really sure what that is, but I'm thinking it's a community event. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that, yeah, thank you. So that's an example of um, support with, um, that may in, be um, intentional to invite youth to participate in that event. If there is some real intention to invite adolescents as an example, youth to, um, participate in some way or to be even on the planning committee for that event. And in terms of a strategy, are you saying like participating in that planning would be a strategy? Yeah, exactly. Like um, bringing um, youth to the table to be included right in the planning as a um, strategy or to participate, maybe there is a youth intentional, there are youth activities planned for community events that are um, planned by youth. And then I'm thinking another um, example might be moving into summer, our like rec departments, including the voice of youth um, in the planning of activities this summer to happen in the county, in Arista County, instead of just the same rec programs that we've had year after year. So might they be working with the youth advisors or, you know, are they mentoring youth as an example? So maybe there's an increase of mentoring opportunities this summer for youth working um, through workforce around say rec programs in Northern Maine. Thanks, Keeney. Yeah. So again, bringing their voice to the table and being able to access services is, are two areas that I think. Okay, well, let's just start with that and say like bringing their voices and um, active participation, right? Are there examples um, that others, so if we're thinking about the goal, the goal of this discussion, the takeaway is to be able to identify measurable strategies that we can then bump against uh, whatever the survey outcomes are. So, We'll learn from those. We're not sort of, these are, what we're doing today is definitely formulating drafts, but we wanna be able to get a start, um, you know, in some, some types of strategies. It could be intervention strategies. It could be prevention strategies that we could be using around, the, around, around these issues. So that's kind of what we're doing. And there's no wrong answer and would just love for you to think out loud and um, get us going. And so I'll just open the floor. Yeah. So just so I'm, I'm making sure that I'm brainstorming along the right path. Um, yeah. We are right now, we are now to the point of saying, okay, so what are some thoughts about how we might get there? Okay. Um, so yeah. it can be things like, you know, doing regular dances or something like that, like anything to get youth together, anything to get um, to connect with the organizations that may already exist that are to try to get the folks who are not involved with those organizations um, to kind of reach those kids. That's what we're thinking about right now. Right. That might be, that might be connecting to the exhort, um, being intentional about connecting the 
the current youth serving or service providing organizations to youth is an example of one type of strategy, right? Um, um, and then, and yes, so yes, that is a good example. I think I could offer like the connection of as um, a, a strategy, maybe around as youth um, are leaving school, right? Where they are fed two meals a day, right? So some strategy to maybe try to meet the needs of youth having access to food in the summer. That might be just trying to make that connection, right? As well. And can that be done with connection, you know, or separate, but just I toss that out there as this an, an opportunity to explore a strategy around that. I keep thinking about um, making intentional connections between the not just the organizations that are doing things, but um, you know, like the gaming store in Presque Isle, and there's a gaming store in Holton. And um, I don't know if there's one in Fort Kent, but I, or Madawaska, maybe there is, but um, you know, both of them have strong connection within their community, I think. Um, and maybe youth that are not as sort of averagely connected to the world. Um, mm. Good thought. That is a really interesting path. Maybe a good place for the QC code, right? In the survey, <laughs> good thinking. Also oh, true. When they're connected interestingly, in interesting ways themselves, you know, like the gaming store in Holton is connected with the Limestone Renaissance Festival. Um, you know, so it's like, there's, there's a lot of ways that they move in and out of the community around the broader Aroostook County communities, not just Fulton. Um, That's super interesting. Why are they, like in what way are they connected to the Renaissance Festival? Oh, they're doing heavy list fighting. So they're doing like the, they're doing demonstrations and things like that. Um, and so, you know, I'm thinking like, it's who knows, like, but you know, I know former Renaissance festivals that I've been to usually have a lot of parents and kids, and you know, the pictures I saw from last year seem to have a lot of kids there um, at the festival last year. So um, that's that's great. I mean, because I think I'm hearing you say, in addition to the other ideas that have been thrown out, is there a way to get youth? via their relationship with the gaming store to volunteer or participate in the Renaissance, right? Peace, like, so connection to connection kind of thing. And, and then, it, I don't know what we know about the gaming stores, but are they all owned by the same person? Is it a franchise? I don't, I don't think so. Works. No, Eagle Hill here in Presque Isle is different, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and I can tell, I mean, I can say here that like I was directed to the gaming store in Holton um, to put up like pride Aroostook signs. So they are also a relatively supportive community. Um, I think that would be another thing to think about is the businesses like Damien's store. Um, I'm also thinking like Told You Wood Emporium down in Holton. Um, and I mean, I'm sure there's other, I just don't know them all, but places that I know youth tend to flock. What about theater, theaters? Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how 
you know, how many youth at, attend a movie theater anymore, exercise places, yeah, youth ministry. I'm not sure. There might be other places that I'm not thinking of. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering, like in Fort Kent, particular, like you know, do people go to the coffee shop? Yeah, what is that? I forget what the name of the brewing company is. The brewers, the mm -hmm. coffee shop is, but um, you know, I know like the few times that I've been, I go to Bogan Books relatively often up in Fort Kent, and um, there's always a kid or two in there when I walk in. Um, usually with a parent, but you know that doesn't or some adult, but. Um, bookstore in Presque Isle has started a youth um, book club. Also. Oh, nice. Yeah. Damien, as, as someone who um, has a business related to this, I wonder what this brings up for you in terms of, you know, connecting, being a conduit, having stores be a condu conduit, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, um, Kate definitely brought up some really good I, good thoughts that kind of are sparking some directions in my mind about this because one, it definitely makes me think it's like, okay, like Eagle Hill, folks go there. There are a lot of youth that go there and I've seen the same youth there that I've seen at the libraries in Presque Isle. They go there uh, the library in Presque Isle has a lot of young folks that go there. They'll go there to play Pokemon or something, or they'll go to Eagle Hill. So what it makes me think is that there's actually, even just looking at this as just youth as a whole, but actually different scenes within the community and what they're doing and where they're going and how they're connecting. Like Eagle Hill is good because, um, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a nerd. But, you know, there's a lot of nerdy kids there that are like very open to actually volunteer time and get into various activities that are, uh, that totally bring out some of that joy in themselves. And um, things like Eagle Hill and the library connect that. But that doesn't mean that that's going to get everybody. I mean, I've talked with some youth and I, I mean, a fair amount of kids that come in when I bring up things like this and just overall asking questions, I mean, they're, they're, there's a pretty consistent um, message of there isn't really that many places for the youth to hang out. I mean, I, I definitely have a lot of kids saying like, so happy this record store is here because where else do we have to go? You know, I mean, there's not even a lot of even though we have nature, there's not even that many parks that kids feel they can go and hang out to or stores that are youth focused. Um, I mean, the mall culture is gone. We don't even have mall culture, which if we had actually an active mall in Presque Isle would be perfect for something like this because there would be a, a lot of different stores in there. It doesn't mean that we still can't focus on things in the mall. Um, because I know that they have Wintergreen Art Center, for instance. Uh, it's a good place I would look into. They have activities there. They also have creative um, events that I'm sure they would be more than happy to um, somehow work with us. Um, I also work at the radio station. So, I mean, there's any public service announcement I am totally down to talk about on air and um, even have something that's somehow connected our internet isn't very like our social media presence isn't that great yet but um yeah i looking at it as different groups within the youth and how we approach those you know like for instance kids who are really into sports going to sporting events or you know um kids that are really into gaming and fantasy um going to the libraries and going to eagle hill and stuff like that um and keeping that in mind um, because yeah we can't just go to necessarily just the boy scouts because we were going to potentially just get only one perspective um, and that's only going to do us so much uh, so that's some of my thoughts I mean I'm also just more than happy to anything to talk about and bring into the record store I mean we have events there as well 
um, poetry readings, music and stuff, live events, which if we had more of that going on in our community, those would be the places that we could get people involved and youth involved in what we're doing here. And I don't even know if there's any way of us to actually bring youth into these very meetings even possibly or something. I mean, sometimes when we're having these talks, um, we're asking like, well, what are they thinking? And where are they? And what are they doing? You know, it's like, <laughs> how do we get them into these meetings yeah. so that they're here and they not only have a voice, but they also have a social media presence with thousands of other, you know, hundreds of other youth, you know, that can all easily just communicate with each other because genuinely they already do, you know, and then it's about breaking that barrier, you know, a little bit here and then bringing them the nurture and love that they need. So, yeah. I think that's good because um, I think it's important for us to understand what their interests are and build on those. Absolutely. Their skills and their interests. And I mean, I no longer have a teenager, so I'm, I'm not uh, very well connected with that. But um, yeah, I think it would be good to be able to connect with some of the youth to determine what their interests are, what their skills are. And, build on that maybe kind of a backwards way to get at it but i'm wondering about um you know like maybe getting in with the police stations for them to kind of alert us you know like hey you know like these are the these are the places that the kids hang out that we see you know like these are the kids that like you know if we're trying to get at kids that are not as connected. Um, I'm wondering if, you know, without them necessarily being the ones going out to say, because I don't want the police necessarily involved with their, you know, to be the ones handing this out unless they supposedly really want to be. Um, but I'm wondering about something like that, like getting at, you know, I was just thinking to myself, I was like, oh, I wonder where the pit parties are these days. You know, like, I don't know, I've been a bajillion years since I was at one. Um, I don't even know if that's what they still call them anymore. But um, I'm thinking, like, what would that look like? Um, yeah, absolutely. And it's hard because once you even potentially find so, like uh, where they are and what, I mean, do, does anybody want to like, yeah, hypothetically fill out a survey or you know right so there's exactly. a part of this that's also inspiration and you know focusing on inspiring the youth to want to feel inspired within themselves to do something and also just overall like be more health conscious and and so yeah it's we could come at it from so many different angles because there is actually it's kind of like this universal you know, it's kind of a big, it's a big picture sort of project, which is really important and great. But yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, tough. It, it's too bad that we can't, um, you know, pull together some kind of um, small youth focus group uh, to be asking some of these questions that we're talking about and get more information from a small group, like a focus group. Yeah. Um, it's again the sort of there isn't a lot of places where kids congregate these days because of not only where we're located uh, rurally, COVID, um, technology, social media, anxiety. I mean, it really there you know there isn't just all, you know there's not a lot of places for kids to hang out, and even if there were, a lot of kids are already just indoors a lot of the times anyway. Um, Again, it's just where I feel like, I mean, where I'm coming from, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, you know, in the community is trying to figure out how to create certain events that can bring kids together and also, you know, educate and inspire them to be more of what they want to be with themselves. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a little tricky because, you know, there is already just that. A lot of kids are just online. A lot of kids are just, they're virtual. Um, and so, I mean, that is something that when it comes to some of these things, we can tap into that 
but um, yeah. it's still important because we're talking about getting people to come together and you know getting outside more and stuff like that. And I know that um, these are already kids that are connected to a thing, um, you know, but Caribou High School has a GSA, a Gay Strain Alliance, that is apparently meeting pretty regularly, eight or 10 kids that go. Um, the Prescott Community Players are bringing apparently a whole bunch of kids um, to Pride of Roostick, um, which you know, I mean, like, those are things that, like, I'm just thinking, you know, like, the outsider kids, um, you know, that may be connected to, like, a teeny little thing, um, like their theater group in their high school, or their diversity club, or their GSA, um, you know, that yeah, you know, I I'm just thinking about like kids like that to be able to connect in those ways. Um, you know, I expect Meg has already, you know, planned on doing this, but I expect this will be available at the Pride Rustic too. Um, you know, to be able to do stuff there, because um, I think that that's you know between those and all like the various events. I mean, like there are so many people that go to. Thursdays on Sweden Street. Yeah. You know, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know how connected those either, but like they go. Um, what is that? Yeah, what is that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thursdays on Sweden Street is a big street. They close one of the streets in Caribou. And um, it's a relatively small street. So it feels like there's a lot of people. Um, and they have music and vendors and food. And some nights there can be thousands of people there. That's amazing. It's a little nutty. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weekly. Is it a weekly event? Uh, it's every other week. And then on the opposite, it throughout the summer. Um, and then on the opposite weeks of Thursdays on Sweden, there's Rocking on Riverside, which is in Presque Isle. Very cool. Oh, nice. So the community yeah, the plan, is sort of, of, Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. And we will be at all of those. Um, yeah. We can have the survey event. You know, we can have the iPad. I think part of it is just going to be like, I, I'm guessing maybe it would help with motivation if we put up a really big sign that says you could win up to a hundred dollar gift card. <laughs> yeah. So and, maybe have kids and then ages 13 kids. to 18. So it's only these yeah. ages. Yeah. Okay. If you can hire some kids too for the night. Right. Yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea at all. We can try that. I know last year when I went to the fair, being there every night, I had one eighth grader who came every single time and he started handing stuff out for me. And we had the spin wheel and he was like, I want to do that. And so he was the one engaging people all night. Like he gave him something to do and he was thrilled to be there. So if I can figure out a way to do that. Um, you may reach out to Job Corps. I don't know what their rules are tomorrow, now. actually, anymore, but, um, you know, you may reach out because they usually have kids that go for the admission side of things. They're on really tight lockdown right now. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the part. I don't know what their rules are at the moment, but you may reach out to them anyway for future things, because that might be something that people are willing to do. Good point. We actually have folks going there tomorrow for a health fair, so good timing. <laughs> Because of COVID, they're locked down. So I think, though, um, in addition to just getting the survey out, I'm hearing in terms of strategies, like, uh, you know, like strategies, overarching strategies, I think I'm hearing there's a, there are specific community, I don't know what to call them, so I'm not going to label them, but like heavily frequented places. And that was maybe the gaming, you know, and their businesses too. So it's it's your shop, Damien, it's the gaming spaces. It's, you know, so there's that whole sort of line of um, building in a network of connections through existing youth heavily frequented places, right? That's sort of like one. Another strategy I think I'm hearing is 
use ongoing events, sort of like Thursdays in Sweden Street, like, but I think, you know, so there's like, there's the business one, there's one about, oh, good idea, Kate. There's another one about um, events. Then there's this, and it sounds like, is Eagle Hill a business? Yes. yes. Okay. So that would go in the business category. Um, but then there's also these um, uh, groups or, or, you know, these efforts, whether it's theater group, Gay Straight Alliance, Pride Aroostook, like that's like a third strategy in terms of the outreach and connectedness. If you sort of look at those three levels of, um, let's just say that consistent effort was put in on all three of those levels in a way that you could measure it. Um, and it became the norm instead of the exception that youth knew that by being there, they could connect to the wider world. If I'm at gaming shop or Damien, I'm at your shop, GameStop, I can then, um, you know, find people there know to support me and will indefinitely to find ways to volunteer in community, whether it's at the Renaissance Fair or whatever it is. If I'm going to Thursdays at Sweden, Sweden Street, Thursdays on Sweden Street, you know, there are there are ways there for me to feel seen and heard and recognized, whether I'm there supporting other youth in being able to find their way to stuff, whether I'm learning about different volunteer opportunities there, whatever it will be. You see my point? So like to normalize that these efforts and this awareness are going on, they're part of a new norm. Like they're not they're not one-offs. They're not relying on one personality who sort of says, oh, this matters. Um, but they, the combination of those strategies as a consistent presence, intentional outreach, um, knowledgeable people who can support youth in connecting meaningfully to, to community events and volunteer things. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe it moves inside, right, in the winter. How do you sustain it, right? Yeah, I mean, some of these are on, I gather some of these are inside or year round, or am I making that up? Some of them are. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that, you know, there's a lot of things that happen. You know, and I can think of like during the summer, there just tends to be more. Um, but during the winter, you know, I mean, you at, there's at least one thing a month that I can think of off just off the top of my head. Um, that would be a sort of doable thing, um, you know, in a connection that if it doesn't already exist, which it might, and I just don't know. Um, could easily exist, I would think. Um, or imagine if Prescal and Caribou swapped off an event every other week, right? All winter long for use. You know, I'd, I don't know to whatever it's called, but like Sweden Street moves inside every other week for something like that for youth. How do we tie some of this to food? I really right. love I to gather and party. Yeah. Like, I mean, the summer farmers thing around food might be easier. Sorry, Damon, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the farmer's market, I was thinking, is one. Um, and I mean, it's people are going there for food. I see youth there. Um, another thought I just had was the roller rink in Caribou is packed with kids and family. I mean. That's great. Um. There's that, but yeah, I mean, the farmer's market is a great place to get started on some of the, you know, to bring the food as, you know, food element into this. Um, and um, even I was, I don't know, this is kind of maybe funny, but restaurants, I don't know, kids go to restaurants or something, if there's any way to like, I don't know, and like, oh, you can get this meal for free or something if you fill this out, or like, do you want to, Here's something related to something you might be interested in, you know, and 
I don't know. I'm just trying to think of other places that the youth are going to and hanging out at. And um, I mean, yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, besides that, free wing night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, maybe. I know that one of the places in Presque Isle that kids hang is Domino's. Right, that's one of the right. Just hang out or Tim Hortons, you know, if there's something like that. I, I'm wondering, and Damien, tell me what you think about this. If, like, if you're already doing events that are trying to draw youth, right? We we know that it's difficult to try to create new habits. So inviting people into a space that they're not familiar with or not used to going is like pulling teeth. That doesn't happen very well. But if you've already got an event, maybe it's at, at your store, Eagle Hill, wherever. And, and we said, okay, um, is there a way, and maybe it's the school farm in Presque Isle, or maybe it's the tech center where they're teaching food prep to say, <laughs> host a, a meal, or maybe it's just heavy appetizers or whatever the case is at Mudroom at right. Eagle Hill. Like that would yeah. bring the food, especially yeah. if it's prepared by youth at yeah. the tech center, I don't know. Hmm. We've done that before. I mean, we I remember one of the first live shows that we had there. I specifically was like, let's make free vegan food for everybody just for the two people that don't know what the vegan diet is all about. Just to like all of a sudden spark this conversation and then they go away with that. Um, so absolutely. I mean, that's that is the thing. I mean, you know, and yeah, like people come out for one thing. That's kind of, I think, really what it comes down to is, yeah, people go to this one place for this one thing and we have something there to offer them. Um, so, yeah, um, there's a lot of opportunity with that. Did I hear in Arusta County there was going to be a, um, a van, like a food pantry van or a farmer's market van? Is that something I'd heard about? So ACAP has a grant for a mobile service unit, but it's not specific to, I mean, that might be a component of it, but I don't know if that's what you're thinking of. I was just imagining this van full of great food, like showing up at these places, right? I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of right around town. So one of my pipe dreams once upon a time was to have a youth led food truck. Yeah, absolutely. It's great. How great idea. would that be? Yeah. So cool. So cool. With information too, and not even just food, you, you know, you bring, bring the food, but also bring potentially, you know, just pamphlets, information, links to other things other events uh, that have, you know, some other form of nourishment for them as well, you know, and I, mean, I wanted to do that for a while. It's just have a food truck that was totally free, show up, and once all the food's gone, leave, <laughs> you know, but uh, one day, getting there. As I was thinking about, like, how could you, I mean, this is work, this would take probably a couple of years to but like a, a card that's available to youth 14 to 18 where they could go visit the pant, you know, a food market, you know, and get outdoor good vegetables or fruits or whatever. Um, any market be able to use, again, for them to show up, we have to assume they have money, right, to be able to buy that food. But is there a way to supplement that through a grant long term down the road or, or a grant to build that food truck? I love that. <laughs> Yeah, the food truck is a cool idea. I mean, in my work with youth, um, uh, one of the things we underestimated, we had a youth garden and they would plant it and then they would help us harvest it. But then we would also take the kids to help us cook. So they learned how to cook what we grew, but, and then they would serve it to people who were food insecure or and eat it themselves. The challenge we learned was 
that many of the kids were, were, all, were very accustomed to processed food, but not to fresh food. And the mouthfeel of many dishes was very off-putting to them. So I wonder, as we think about nutritional security, if in the discussion that we're having, if there's a way to support them in trying new things in ways that won't be like a whole broccoli stock might make somebody lose their mind. But are there ways? Yeah, Damien. Sorry. It's really sparked a thought is that um, what's one thing that's like really big right now and it's been pretty big and steady since COVID is cooking shows on social media like TikTok and YouTube. And there's an, a huge flood of that. I mean, before COVID, people were watching it just as like entertainment. But now because of COVID and people were inside, they started actually doing the recipes. And I've been doing the same thing um, where I'm just like starting to really be more hands-on with my food. Um, besides just making salads or something. But some of these uh, videos that I've been personally watching are like, for instance, there's this guy, he's uh, Joshua Weissman and he's, he uh, has a bunch of videos called, um, I can't remember what they're called, but one sub series that he has on his YouTube channel is called But Better. And he will go to, um, McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Girl Scout cookies, um, basically all of this like really immediately gratifying processed food that people are really into and that it's really indulgent and most of the time not actually very good for you. And he does a step by step on how to make it at home with simple ingredients from everything from how to make the bread to how to make the burger. Um, and it does bring a thought to my mind of how we could potentially even explore the possibility of something that's uh, an educational social media cooking thing that is local or even has like a rotating youth of people doing it, but showing how to cook the stuff that they like that is processed, but at home and, you know, within like 30 minutes or something like that. Because right? that's one thing I was thinking about as well is that, yeah, a lot of kids who um, grew up poor, uh, ate a lot of processed food or eat a lot of processed food. And so their relationship with food is very, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of confined within a certain like palate. And then I, I was always thinking, it's like, well, what if I start making this stuff from scratch, like making macaroni and cheese from scratch in a certain. Oh, you muted yourself. Oh, thanks, Damien. Have it more focused on um recipes they're already familiar with you know what i mean i know it's just thought there's oh. a um my, no there's a um i think i find her on youtube but um she she veganizes everything like, right. literally it's really impressive um you know and I think that that would be a fantastic way to loop in some of the other organizations that are trying to do the same thing, like the extension and 4-H and FFA and, you know, like those places that are really trying to do a lot of those kinds of things too. Um, you know, because it's like, even now, I think of extension as the cooperative extension as like the old ladies thing. And like, you know, I'm the same age as many of the women that would have been in the cooperative extension when I was a kid, um, you know? And so I think that that's something to think about um, as a way to kind of incentivize for them. Like, hey, we've got this, like we've got this youth thing going on, um, partner with us and we can make a better connection for you with the youth and maybe grow your projects as well. Um, I also think it might be fun to go to some of the farms. Um, Absolutely. You know, like there are, you know, everybody knows what, how horrid a broccoli field smells when it's being harvested. Um, but, you know, what does it take to go 
and do that. What does a small community garden look like? What does the big farms, you know, in Fort Kent look like, like the Aristic Beef Company or, you know, down in Holton? Um, you know, like what do those places look like and feel like and, you know, how does your food get from there to the farmer's market, if that is where you go, or there to the grocery store. Are you all imagining that like social media, let's just say TikTok um, or YouTube, probably TikTok, uh, that, that you could take an existing show and get youth together and support them and working together to make stuff that they're seeing on YouTube or do stuff or on TikTok? Or are you imag and or are you imagining that the social media strategy is that they're doing it and putting it on TikTok for other youth? Like, or are you imagining that they can learn from the cooperative extension, extension and stuff like that. Like somehow there's a social media connection between the kids and the youth and people who are already doing some of that work. Like, I'm just trying to make sure when we think of strategies, what you think might, what combination of things you think might be most exciting or have the greatest potential. A little bit of everything. <laughs> I mean, okay. to be honest, those are all really great ideas. And if we applied them all together, I mean, a lot of folks, not even just the youth, there are scrolling through TikTok. And when you see something that you can relate to, like, be it something that's local, and it's also something that does have an influence, because more than ever, I feel that like, like social influence has a big effect and on you know, I mean, one minute broccoli's gross, the next minute broccoli's awesome when somebody who influences somebody else says it is, you know, and unfortunately, it just is that easy, even though you know you wish it would be that if like people would be talking about that more often. But I mean, if there's any way to make a presence in social media that's educational and talking about preparing food that goes like one video is on the farms in caribou we're like oh that's a farm in caribou i know you know and they're like oh this is a person that i go to school with and they're on this this you know TikTok cooking show or something that i have that's you know that i follow oh and then i could also be a part of that oh and then they have an event you know that's going to be over at the fiddlehead festival or you know they're going to be at mudroom records or they're going to be at eagle hill like this gives them you know becomes all of a sudden more of a proactive thing to go to that because potentially they can then in involve themselves in it um, where they're present. They feel more involved in something that has like um, importance to them because social media is so important to them and because that stuff is that effective on the direction that, um, you know, people's priorities are running, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I like that. I watch, I do, I teach. I eat. Yeah, that's just the trajectory. Listening to Damien, I thought, like, that's the trajectory of that, right? Like, you watch the TikTok video or something, and then you can you can kind of learn how to do it and, and do it together or incorporate the cooperative extension or whatever, and then... Right the TikTok and it's your thing and you're teaching other people That's right it's like spreading that you share that video and then someone else watches it and and then once you find it you know all of a sudden like kaboom this one video gets like half a million views and all of a sudden there's more emphasis than on that channel that you know in the community and then it's not just um you know, people being like, hey, you want to sign this? Or, hey, can you come over here? And, you know, it's next thing, you know, they want to go to that. They want to be a part of that. Um, that's really what it does come down to is having that relationship of where their priorities lie and 
us understanding what that is and then being on the same page with them about that you know um, it's yeah it's a good idea i think we can get something with that you also made me think of um the you're right like one one person loads something and all of a sudden like my stepdaughter's sending me lychee jello like right that kind of, you know what i mean like she wouldn't eat a carrot but she's eating lychee because somebody somewhere said it was cool right. um, and and i i feel like boy wouldn't that be cool if we could do if we could go viral with you know trying you know tofu i mean right yeah some, Post all yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, forget the cinnamon challenge. We'll do a broccoli challenge, or I don't know. Just, but it's to predict what's going to catch and what's going to lay yeah. down. Yeah, I've never done this before, but I couldn't. We create like a group on uh, Facebook or one of those social media. Um, you know, like when I'm interested in hiking, so I usually find a group you know, a hiking group and join that group or join whatever group of, you mm -hmm. know, of interests that I have, cooking, whatever. I mean, could we do something like that? I don't know if that would be hard to do or, I mean, I've never done one, but I do join different groups based on my interests. And it's kind of cool because you do get, um, lit, you know, you, you get messages about where people are hiking and, you know, um, so I would think that you could do that for, for uh, cooking or nutrition or what have you. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think it would be very hard to do. One of the, things the that older. Um, I like it. I like it, Rachel. Hmm. Go Damien. So the next to the record store I own on that same property is a house. Um, and, um, I have some plans with the house and one of them is there's a kitchen. It's kind of like a 1950s looking kitchen, kind of almost like a diner aesthetic. It's pretty cute. And I kind of want to emphasize that even more, like put the Felix, the clock cat clock on the wall sort of thing. But, um, one thing that we had been talking about, um, because I, I work at the radio station, but I'm just, I'm not going anywhere there and I keep getting deeper involved in it and involved in it to hopefully get to the point where we're using it as a vessel for all of these organizations and anything that's happening in the community that we can really be constructive and positive and growth focused, um, especially with the youth. Um, but having the kitchen in the house be a place where there would be a cooking show potentially. And um, it doesn't have to be that kitchen, but just in general, like the idea of thinking of a place where we can have something set up so that there is something con consistent with that or like just basically structure something. Um, I mean, yeah, getting a social media presence um, and in multiple social media sites, but also, yeah, having, building that. And I don't know, is isn't a bad idea, but um, the plan, I guess what I'm saying is I'm already like planning on doing something like that and it could easily, you know, like once it takes off, like, just tack this on to that if needed. Um, I mean, just with anything that I'm honestly doing, I just more than down to tack it <laughs> onto anything we're doing here. I'm just thinking about, you know, exactly that, Damien, and like, you know, how do you do something? Because Maine Transnet did a, I don't remember what it's called. It was like, I think it was called Cooking with Queers. It was on Fridays. And they did it like, once, maybe twice a month. Sometimes they would do it like every four, all four weeks. Um, and, you know, they just made, you know, it was real basic. You know, they had their phone and I think they just live streamed it. And, you know, so then again, it got recorded so you can go and watch it again if you weren't available on Friday. But, you know, it's like they made cookies and quiche and baked potatoes and super easy things to make for those of us that make things on a regular basis and for those who don't are like this miracle thing that, you know, you can make a quiche and how hard is that, you know? Um, and they just, you know, sort of showed what you had to have and they just did it. And it was, 
really low key. No, low budget. I don't think it was low key, um, but it was definitely <laughs> low budget. Um, and, you know, I bet you could film a few of them, you know, in some kitchen in an ACAP thing somewhere um, and just kind of get it going um, with some kids you already have somewhere. Um, and along those lines, too, I'm thinking that um, would there be a possibility to engage a health coach for youth? Because you do see a lot of people on social media who are health coaches and they'll post, you know, a lot of different healthy recipes or initiatives or what have you. And they do get a lot of followers. It would be super, super good to have someone do that, Rachel. It's a great strategy. Um, or have have a have youth sort of field the question, right? Youth to youth, and then maybe an adult is weighing in on the final sort of answer or whatever. But having youth be the, you know what I mean, the liaison or something. I don't even know what word I mean. But to try to make it youth to youth, that could be really really good. Yeah, maybe there's a health coach or I think sometimes of the nutritionists that are employed by the um, grocery stores, you know, if the um, youth are kind of preparing the food, but maybe that that health coach or nutritionist is standing there to answer questions. So when the youth is like, now, why do I have to do this or whatever, or I don't know, just to have the conversation maybe. Grocery stores is a thought. I had that just the just thinking of that. It's like I wonder if there's anything or any sort of conversation or relationship that with any local grocery stores that can help with any of this, um, like sleepers or Hannafords or something. If there's anything we can do, I mean, I've been doing this thing where I've been uh, sometimes going to the grocery store with cookbooks. And it's making me think about this thought of like, if I was in a grocery store and there was any like, I mean, this is, I don't know if this is even possible, but just like you can go into a grocery store, but it also has within there and you know, like, op, like thoughts on, you know, instead of just looking on your phone, which sometimes even though it's all right there, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily utilize, utilize it that way, yeah. but have something in a grocery store that says, here, these are very simple things you can make tonight. All the ingredients are in this store. We even show you where they are and have it somehow. It's, I mean, it's educational and it's uh, informative and, you know, it's, it's health focused as well. And um, just a thought, but grocery stores definitely um, sparks some thoughts there. Mm -hmm. I can think of, you know, one of the more impactful high school classes I ever took um, was, it wasn't home ec. But it was something like that. I just, that's just not what they called it. Um, and it was a class that, you know, I didn't need to take. I just, I didn't need the credits. I had the time and I was like, I don't want to not be in school. So I went to school and I took this class and she took us grocery shopping. Huh. Yeah. And that was in 1995, so a million and a half years ago when gas was not 4 65 a gallon. Um, and, you know, like just the reality of looking at it, you know, because there's always the things like, you know, what can you buy if you have to, if you are having to use SNAP benefits for a while? What can you buy that's not, you know, the whole beans and rice scenario? Um, you know, like, what can you make? What does that look like? Um, you know, if you don't have a restriction on your food budget, what does that look like for you? Um, you know, like things like that, like looking at those kinds of things that might be of interest to people, you know, especially to 17, 18 year olds who are maybe looking at having to go out on their own. Um, 
you know, that are, that's not punitive in the way some of those, you know, social benefits can be. Um, and so I'm thinking that might be also an interesting way to get into grocery stores and like to have people, you know, you always know that the things on the top shelf and the bottom shelf are cheaper than the things at eye level. Um, yeah. But you have to be taught that. You don't just know it. Yeah. Great. Well, let's do this. Let's sort of pull together because we've been talking, we've been sort of doing this idea e type of thing that, but there are strategies in each one, I think. And maybe what we do for right now is sort of step back between this and the next meeting, put them in strategy form. So they sound CDC like, if you know what I mean, like, you know that how that goes, like they got to look like CDC stuff. And then we look at them in the next meeting. So we don't lose like the heart of the point. Um, but we start with what we've got so far. This was a super fun conversation actually, right? Like it was super fun. Um, um, and I just have to have social commentary, how much I love seeing pets in the background. So watching, I just, I love that. I can't help it. Uh, kids and cats. Um, so, so, uh, so we'll take these and then, and then move these forward. Um, so stay tuned on that front, unless there's anything else, like at this point, you're like one more thing, then I will move us to review our purpose statement right now. Anything else for now? Okay, good work team. Um, I don't know if anyone has the agenda or Meg, if you wanna put up or if you want me to put it up, let me share screen either way. Um, I should I have two. Let me, I'm working off of one screen, but I think I can do that. Okay, okay. So, um, so this, we threw it in the agenda just for ease of access for everyone. This is kind of like the sum of, um, you will remember in our last meeting, we sort of threw out key ideas. Then Bronson took it and took those ideas and sort of crafted an initial draft. It went out. Uh, and, and some of the feedback that was provided has been incorporated into what we're all looking at right now. But, um, you know, the, 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 what, we're, what, what this is, the point of this is to be able to sort of have our North Star or the purpose, like what are we doing and why? So someone said, what, is, what are you part of? What is this thing? Why do you exist? Like that kind of thing. Um, that, that this would help to provide insight and also be able to be used as a litmus test. Like is something on track? Is an idea on track? Uh, why or why not? And, and think about it that way. So I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and just let you reflect on what's here. The goal of this conversation is to say, is it, is it good enough? Does it need tweaking and refining? Is it missing anything glaring? Does it feel right? Because this is a head, but it's also a heart-driven uh, proposition here, right? So does it, you know, is there anything here that needs additional consideration? So I'm going to be quiet and give you a minute to read it, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, I'll just go through the group. I'm just gonna call on people. You, know, you can say, I don't have anything to say right now. 
which is in the name of getting all voices in. Um, Damien, when you read this, does this feel right? Does anything feel like it's missing? I don't see anything that seems like it's, I can't think of anything right now that seems like it's missing. Um, nothing's coming to mind. Okay. Rachel, anything here that you're like, uh, missing, not feeling it? You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, so when I'm, I'm reading this for the first time, the thing that jumped out at me when I first read it was, does this address um, the social connectedness piece enough? And I guess when you read the evidence-based strategies and the pathways, um, bringing uh, the community that support food, positive community environments, I guess, would help yeah, so I, I, it's all there. That was just a, a question that came to mind as I read it. I think it's a, yeah, I think it's a fair question. Like, does it feel aligned enough? Um, cause just that because there are positive community environments, does that mean there's gonna be increased social connectedness, right? Yeah, positive and healthy developments. Um, to promote pathways for through systems and the community that support. I'm not sure how it would enhance that. Okay, that's all right. Right it's now, we're, right now we're just yeah. we're just pointing out what we think and but it's very good i mean i think i think it reads very nice that, that's the only question that came to mind then when i saw a positive community environment i thought well maybe that that addresses it but i'm not sure okay fair enough thank you wow. kate initial thoughts about this or thoughts at this juncture uh yes my thought is that i feel like the first sentence and the second sentence are different um the first sentence is what we're doing now. Like, I feel like that's the, like our purpose is to develop this plan. And then the second sentence, I'm not entirely sure if that's actually like what we are supposed to be doing or what the plan will do and the group that actually will implement the plan should it get funded. I just feel like it's two different sections of the thing and I'm like I don't know that we're going to be able to implement evidence-based strategies between now and whenever we are done meeting um I know that we are developing strategies um that should create these pathways um I think that I'm not quite sure um that the second sentence is the right. Uh, I'm not even sure what to, how to say it. It just it feels like they're they're two different, you know, like one's future tense and one's current. Um, so I, but I, but generally, I think that you know that is what this plan is expected to do. Should it get funded for the actual project. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm thinking, Meg, is that, you know, we are developing strategies that are evidence-based that will create the pathways for the next team of people to do this work. Um, I just don't know that that's our mission to actually implement them. Well, uh, as I listen to the three of you, um, is it about is it about developing uh, uh, viable or uh, promising? Uh, 
Because if the planning phase is about the developing, you can't be certain of any outcomes, right? But you, you can, I don't know. I see that what we are doing is making a workflow and a work plan for the people who are actually going to do this. So they know what they're supposed to do when they get the funding to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they don't have to think it up. We've already done that. Yeah. You know, and we may have already said, these are some of the strategies you can use to do these things so you don't have to brainstorm them and waste a couple months, you know, like we've already done that work as part of the implementation and design plan. Does anyone not agree with that, that that's something that needs refinement? Does anyone not agree with that? Okay, so then uh, Keeney, yep. You're muted. I just want to add to in all re in all reality, um, and I was thinking of that same thing you were talking about, Kate. Is um, in a, and what I was suggesting is in addition to evidence based strategies, we will create viable pathways, um, which I love that word viable pathways, because I'm not sure every one of our strategies we talked about is evidence based. I mean, I think it's by gathering, you know, but like, I don't, if we tried to say face to say TikTok was an evidence-based um, strategy, I don't know that somebody would agree with us, but I think it's in addition to evidence-based strategies. So, right, we're meeting adolescents where they're at. Um, so I don't think um, our purpose is, I don't think we need to hang on to evidence-based so much. It's in addition to, I think, because there's some really, wonderful ideas that came up today that would never pass evidence base. And I think we ought to name that so we, someone later doesn't say, well, that's not evidence based and that's not evidence based. Innovative but, approaches, maybe. What's yeah, that? That's, that's Innovative cool. approaches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, promising practices, all good, yeah. Okay. I just hate to have that stop us from something really creative. Not even creative, just what adolescents want. Right, <laughs> exactly. Like just acknowledging the reality of who they are. Um, okay. And then this notion of making sure the spine aligns, that social connectedness is one of the, but then do these things food accessibility, positive community environments and healthy development. Like, is that gonna get us? Um, the sense it, of belonging? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or I just talk out in mattering versus like belonging doesn't mean you know, in all reality, you can belong and not matter. Um, so our two, do we talk about connections as mattering, that they're authentic connections, right? We're not doing something for, we're doing something with. Are any of those terms more measurable than any others? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we have Maya's data for mattering. Mm -hmm. we're we don't have belonging data and myas. <laughs> Maybe we social well-being. I like social well-being myself. Like healthy yeah. development. I mean. Yeah, exactly. Social well-being is a great one. I like that phrase. That feels like we are intentionally moving it from a physical health to a mental and emotional health in integrating all of them. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And just to clarify for my note taking that phrase was social well-being. That's the one that resonates. 
Yes, I think that's what I'm hearing. Okay, well, what we're not going to do as a group is sit and wordsmith. Um, um, but I will do just a quick final call for anything else here that feels like it needs expanding, massaging. And then the goal will be between this meeting and the next to sort of ideally pull together what turns out to be a final draft and we'll review it quickly at the next meeting and ideally approve it. All right, thank you. I think we can stop sharing screen. Okay, that's great. So uh, then just in terms of next steps, uh, let's just talk a little bit about where we are in the arc of the work. And by that, I mean, the next time we meet, it will be June. Um, and Meg, I wonder if you wanna just sort of think out loud because you seem to always hold this mental, you know, in a good way, useful way, uh, um, probably burdensome for you, but one less brick in the backpack for the rest of us. Uh, for what the timeline is and where we are sort of in our work. Sure. So in theory, um, June was when we had a draft plan to the leadership team. And to be quite honest, after today's conversation, I actually think we can be there um, because Bronson already had sort of the background, the demographics, the history. You all got him your kind of mini bios, that kind of stuff. So that is already in the accelerator form template. Um, and so, you know, I feel like we can, for the next meeting, actually have a, a draft that we can, nothing, none of which will be written in stone, that we can completely continue to inform and discuss or strike out entirely or whatever. But, um, but I feel like today's conversation was, incredibly helpful and rich. And so I'm hopeful that I will not completely butcher this conversation by putting it in CDC speak, as Carol mentioned, um, and, and give us that draft. So I'm kind of giddy. <laughs> She's kind of giddy. I don't know what that means, but kind of is better than not at all. That's all I got. Cautiously say. giddy. Yes, I agree. Awesome. That's a terrible crime to be cautiously giddy. Just be giddy. Go ahead. Live on the edge. Well, and the other thing we'll want to do next time, right, is bump up the draft plan against what we learn from the youth surveys and other forms of outreach because their voices are what are guiding us. And so we we want to we want to take that very important step, but there's no reason we couldn't do what we did today, um, in anticipation of input. And I'll be, and I'm sure you will, you all are too, very curious to see how these ideas, uh, sort of, you know, come into focus with uh with with uh with what the youth have to say. So, um, all right, good, good work, team. We're done a little early, unless anybody has anything else they want to talk about. I am just eternally grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you for being here and being so um, creative and participatory. It's great. I totally agree. I appreciate this group every time for the manner in which it shows up. And I don't say that to every group. <laughs> <laughs> so I am discerning in my compliments. So thank you. Uh, thank you all. Yeah. And thank you, Meg, for keeping us on track and coordinating uh, in a turbulent time staff-wise. All right, everybody go play with their pets. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.